Psalm 139, 1 through 6. Listen for God's word. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. And now we'll turn to John chapter 1, verses 43 through 51. The next day Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In 2013, millions of people turned on their computers and opened their email inbox to find a message from one of America's most prominent retail stores, apologizing for a breach that potentially exposed an enormous amount of personal information to cyber criminals. The message read, your trust is a top priority for us, and we deeply regret the inconvenience this may cause. The privacy and protection of our guests' information is a matter we take very seriously, and we have worked swiftly to resolve the incident. While the company was hoping the email would reassure the public of their quick and thorough approach to settling the issue, they were bombarded by the same response from so many of those who received the message. I never gave you my email address much less any other personal information. What exactly have you collected and now leaked? The incident brought to light an elaborate marketing campaign in which the company had gathered bits and pieces of information over time. From past purchases to web searches, even conversation topics spoken near a cell phone which was entered with a customer's address, phone number, and pictures captured by security cameras into what the company calls a guest profile. The information is then used to lure customers through targeted advertising that tricks us into feeling as if the company knows just what we need. In some ways, These realizations of the world we live in makes us want to barricade ourselves in an underground bunker and never communicate with anyone outside our circle of trust. It can be very unsettling to think about our illusion of privacy in a world where eyes are always watching and ears are always listening. If department stores can manipulate our information to pretend to know us intimately, how can we know if any of our relationships are genuine? In the Bible story we read this morning, we meet Nathaniel. Interestingly enough, the Bible only mentions Nathaniel a total of six times, and five of those times come from this 
story. Out of the four Gospels, only the Gospel of John says anything about Nathaniel. Matthew, Mark, and Luke all include Bartholomew as one of Jesus' twelve disciples. Some Bible scholars have decided Bartholomew must be another name Nathaniel went by, but it's not clear. What John tells us is that Jesus was going through a certain town in the region of Galilee, and he invites Philip to follow him. Philip, in turn, goes straight to Nathanael and says, We have found the one about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. The way Philip didn't think it was necessary to overly explain what was said in Moses' law or what exactly the prophets wrote about leads us to believe that Nathanael must be a devout Jewish man who has studied the scriptures most likely had several conversations with Philip before on this very topic. But in response, Nathaniel doesn't say, Oh, good! Or finally, he's here! He says, Can anything good come from Nazareth? Later in John's Gospel, in the one other verse in the Bible that talks about Nathaniel, We learn that he is from Cana, the next town over from Nazareth. So maybe his reaction is less of a slap at Nazareth and more of a tongue-in-cheek sarcasm. That all his life he's heard how unimportant people from his neck of the woods really are. It's possible that what Nathaniel hears is that Jesus has something in common with him. As they're walking up, Jesus has an unusual greeting. He says, here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Jesus is pointing out that Nathanael is honest and sincere and forthright. All qualities that Nathanael may see in himself, but no one has ever really named or maybe characteristics that he strives for. But instead of humbly deflecting the compliment, Nathaniel asks Jesus, where did you get to know me? He probably wasn't wearing an I tell the truth t-shirt. And nobody's nose ever actually grew longer for telling lies. So how did Jesus know something that wasn't immediately evident where did you get to know me Jesus answered him I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you and that answer was somehow enough for Nathaniel to profess faith in Christ rabbi you are the son of God you are the king of Israel was that all it took I saw you under the fig tree. It leaves us wondering what Nathaniel might have been doing under that fig tree. Maybe he had just given his cloak to a homeless beggar. Or maybe he had just called out a merchant for cheating the poor and thought nobody was watching. Maybe he was sitting in the shade reading the scriptures. Some scholars suggest that Jesus was speaking metaphorically about the fig leaves that Adam and Eve used to hide from the consequences of their sin. So to sit under the fig tree would be to dwell in the shadow of sin and death. Other scholars suggest that Nathaniel was kneeling to pray. And his honest, forthright prayer could have only been known between him and God. So Jesus was telling him that he heard his prayer. The truth is that the gospel intentionally leaves out the details about why Jesus' words provoked Nathanael to believe. Because what made sense to Nathanael might never make complete sense to any of us. What happened to Nathanael that day was that God revealed Jesus Christ as the one who knows us personally 
John didn't give every detail. Because then we might be tempted to think that our story has to play out exactly like Nathaniel's story. John is inviting us to imagine that our story, our encounters with Christ, our faith is personal to us. Janine was a teenager that didn't have an extraordinary story. She had a supportive family. She did well in school. And she was active in her church's youth group. But she noticed at church that the stories that were most often lifted up were the likes of Moses hearing from God in a burning bush. Jonah encountering God in the belly of a big fish. Elijah calling down fire from heaven. And Paul's conversion that knocked him off his horse. Janine noticed that all the most faithful people in the Bible seem to have some sensational experience. And she noticed the testimony she heard from the people in her church. All seemed to follow suit. There was nothing about Janine's story that was powerful or compelling. So although she believed in Jesus, she began to wonder if she should be calling herself a Christian at all. She decided that she needed a little more drama in her faith story. Inspired by the story of the shepherd who leaves 99 sheep behind to look for one, Janine made up her mind to deliberately turn away from God so that she could finally have an exciting, life-changing, transformation story like everyone else. Janine quit reading her Bible. She stopped praying and put up a fight when her parents made her go to church. As she was scrolling through social media one day, she ran across a picture one of her friends had posted. It was of a girl about her age sitting alone on a park bench with a scripture reference written in black marker on her hand. Janine's curiosity got the best of her. So she looked up the passage. John 10, 14, says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Hundreds of people saw the picture and kept on scrolling. But Janine knew that it was a message just for her. Sometimes a song comes on the radio at just the right time. Sometimes the phone rings and a friend we've been thinking about is calling. Sometimes a stranger does something completely unexpected to help us. Or a seemingly random word is spoken that perfectly addresses the struggles that we're dealing with. We could chalk these things up to coincidence. Or we could trust that God knows us completely. Not because of some sneaky marketing scheme and not because of any violation of privacy. But because God knew us long before our bodies were ever formed. And God's hope is that we choose to live in him long after our bodies have passed away. Jesus said to Nathaniel, do do you believe because I told you that I saw you under a fig tree, you will see greater things than these. Do you believe because of the things you read in the Bible? Do you believe because of the word you heard at church or the love you experienced from a neighbor? Christ is saying to you, you will see greater things than these. Christ knows that we needed a Savior. So he willingly laid down his life for our sins. Christ knows that we needed death not to have the final word. So he rose from the grave. Christ knows that life is hard and we would struggle from time to time. So he sent us the Holy Spirit. 
And Christ knows that you, in all the ways you are different and unique from everyone else, you are an irreplaceable and essential part of God's story.